grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So the question for this week, if you remember, is where do you see evidence of the kingdom of God? In a book that we're reading by N.T. Wright, he, to paraphrase him a little bit, he says, the kingdom of God is God's space. It is where God is present. And that space, that presence of God, intersects with our space. We see that most visibly with Jesus, but he says that is still true today, still happening with us. He says it is all around us. It's, it's a mystery, but we glimpse it, we get a glimpse of it, in things like Holy Communion and in every act of generous human love. And we get glimpses of the kingdom of God and of the presence of God. So maybe we would amend the question or think about it both ways, that we're looking for evidence of the kingdom of God, we're also looking for evidence of the presence of God at the same time. I asked this question on Tuesday at the Bible study, and one person said that, They see the presence of God, they see evidence of the kingdom of God in the faith of Abraham. So in Genesis 12, God says to Abraham, pick up everything and leave your homeland, leave everything you've known and go to a place that I will show you. So Abraham doesn't know the destination, but he responds and he sets out trusting in God's promise. Also, God promised that he would have descendants. And that was despite the fact that he was already 75 years old and and he and Sarah had no children. And so it's credited to Abraham as righteousness because he believed God. And so evidence of the presence of God in Abraham's life is his faith. Somebody else said acting from faith and love rather than obligation. Somebody else said they see evidence or the presence of God in a sunrise. In our gospel reading, Nicodemus comes to Jesus under cover of darkness, and he says, We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. So the signs that Jesus is doing, they point beyond themselves, and they point to the presence of God. And Jesus makes clear that Nicodemus could not have seen this except by faith, that we cannot see the hand of God without faith. In verse 3, Jesus says, he responds to Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. So these signs that Jesus does, they point beyond themselves and they point to the presence of God, just as a sunrise will do. It points beyond itself, or maybe the full moon this morning, if you were up early enough to see that. Points, that beauty points beyond itself to a greater beauty that testifies to the new creation that, co- that God promises to bring to us one day. And is what we pray for in the Lord's Prayer, on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for that fuller beauty to, to come to be for us. In a book I'm reading, actually, just last night, uh, he was talking about planting seeds. And he's kind of spoke of that in the same way. You plant a seed in the ground, and and he even for him in the the tundra of Wisconsin, in the uh, sub-zero weather, he's planting in his his greenhouse, he's planting seeds. And he says that's an act of faith, that's an act of grace that points beyond itself and points to God. So pointing beyond itself, and we could, we could say that whatever points beyond itself and points to God, whether it be the sunrise, whether it be love of neighbor, whether it be the church, being the church as it is meant to be, all of these point to the presence of God, point to, they are evidence of the kingdom of God. Now I've been thinking about our, our Muslim friend, uh, this JBLM chaplain, that there was an article in the newspaper a couple weeks ago. And just remembering that article and what he talked about, he grew up, remember, as a, as a Lutheran in Louisiana, and he said that it sounds like he had a wonderful church community that cared for each other, that was there for each other, that was the church as we envision it is supposed to be. 
And then later, after he converted to, to Islam, he said one of the things that attracted him, as I remember, was, was their focus on charity. So it seems to me that they're pretty comparable. His Christian church growing up and his new Muslim faith, that they're pretty equal at, at this point. But he seemed to be looking for a deeper truth, something that was, more, was truth to him. These things were important and they were nice, but he was looking for a greater truth. And he seems to have found that in Islam. What little I know of the Muslim faith is that it is focused on the obedience of the faithful person. And it's through their obedience that they are able to receive the reward of heaven. The focus then is on obedience, it's on righteous living, it's on forming an upright character. So that is true for Islam, it's probably true for Judaism as well, it's focusing on on our lives and, and becoming better people, I think, is the focus of Buddhism, Hinduism. It's also when we shift our gaze away from God and put it on ourselves, it's what we tend to focus on as Christians as well, that we focus on our behavior, on being better people and our character formation. That is when we shift the gaze away from God into ourselves. Now, the truth that Christians proclaim that is different from all these other religions, the truth that Christians believe and proclaim is that God comes to us and that we don't, through our righteousness, seek to ascend to God. That Jesus Christ, as Savior, has come into our world and it's not through our righteousness that we somehow are able to save ourselves. Paul says in Romans 4, to the one, to the person who without works trusts in him who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. And so he says that this is the faith that was considered righteous for Abraham, that he trusted and believed in God. It wasn't anything that he did, but he trusted and believed in God's promise. The kingdom of God is built on love. It's built on God's love, and it's our trust and our faith in that love. And the symbol for God's love for us is the cross. So how do we enter this kingdom of God? Is it through our own righteousness, or is it through the cross of Jesus? Jesus tells Nicodemus that it comes through new birth. It comes through receiving a new heart. It comes through a new nature. None of these are things that we can control. None of these are what we can produce through our own efforts. This new way of being leads us to trust and to hope, which was how Psalm 33 ended up. Trust in the present, no matter what our circumstances. Hope in the future, despite the fact that we cannot see very far ahead and we don't know what's ahead of us trust and hope and that leads us to love for one another and both of these trust and hope in God and our love for our neighbor these point beyond themselves and they point to God they point to God's presence they point to God's kingdom and to write again as we open our lives to God's love we begin to lose our fear for what may happen to us and and what the world can do to us we lose that fear as we open ourselves to God's love. And then we begin to become people through whom the power of God's love can flow out from us into the world, a world that so badly needs it. This is the picture of the trust of Abraham, who was also promised to be a blessing to the world. That was the third promise that he received. First, that he would receive a land, that he would have descendants, And third, that he would be a blessing to the nations. This also is the picture of the church as it's meant to be. In closing, we're going to grab Gabe's pacifier. There we go. We're good. In closing, we cannot control God. And that includes, through our own righteousness, somehow pleasing God and winning God's approval. So we must trust and we must hope in God. And God's promise, relying on God's love, which we are promised is steadfast and does not end. 
let you know what I pray for us, for Pilgrim. I pray this each day for us, that God will be with us, that God will lead us, inform us, that God will transform us. We, I pray that, God, you will make us your people, that you will make us to do your will. For now, we trust in the present, and we hope in the future, as we are longing for the day when God's whole creation, heaven and earth, will together be perfect in love, in wisdom, in justice, and in peace. Amen.